Welcome back. Some breaking news. The Supreme Court is ending race-based affirmative action in college admission process, uh, in, the, in the process of college admissions. Constitutional law attorney David Cole here to help us break down this decision. Good morning to you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is a meaty one, just to say the least. The justices ruled six to three in both cases. One of them involved Harvard. Uh, the other involved the University of North Carolina, saying that race should no longer be considered when colleges admit students. So kind of walk us through the, the crux of the reasoning here. We've been uh, dealing with this issue for 50 plus years in college, law school, professional admissions across the country. Uh, the Supreme Court has been very hesitant to say it's okay to consider race, but has always backed away from saying you can't. And they had different ways you could put in a test and holistic factors and all that. Today, the Supreme Court said no more. And it looked at kind of two somewhat state-of-the-art affirmative action programs, one at Harvard and one at UNC, and said, no, these are not constitutional. Don't do this. Now, you, you said uh, the high court has repeatedly upheld affirmative action in some of these legal challenges over the last 40 years. But if you kind of read what the justices have written over the years, it's kind of been a little bit on shaky ground. There's been a lot yeah. of kicking it down the road and yeah. say, well, we're okay here. And so Justice O'Connor famously said about 20 odd years ago, well, hopefully we won't need these for another 20 years. Right. Chief Justice Roberts seized on that in the opinion today and said, it's been 20 years and Harvard and North Carolina still want to do it. It never ends. And that was part of his reasoning for why this opinion needed to be written today the way it was. And you mentioned Justice Roberts want to uh, play a little bit of his, uh, his opinion here. We have permitted race based admissions only within the confines of narrow restrictions. University programs must comply with strict scrutiny. They may never use race as a stereotype or, or negative, and at some point they must end. Respondents' admissions systems, however well-intentioned and implemented in good faith, fail each of these criteria. And uh, in one of show also this from the dissenting opinion from Justice uh, Sonia Sotomayor. The court uh, cements a superficial rule of colorblindness as a constitutional principle in an endemically segregated society where race has always mattered and continues to matter. The court subverts the constitutional guarantee of equal protection by further entrenching racial inequality in education. Of course, supporters of affirmative action have said that this makes college and university campuses more diverse, especially with um, black and Latino students. Now, those who have challenged the law have said that it, uh, you know, qualified students have been denied access and therefore discriminated against. Right, and Justice, Chief Justice Roberts' opinion takes on both of those propositions and says, as for the goal of diversity, that sounds good, but how do you measure it? what's diverse, what's not, what are you really trying to achieve, and concludes it's just not enough to satisfy strict scrutiny, what you have to have when you use race. And then he looks at the numbers and says, look, for every person you let in for a good reason, you're letting somebody else out based on race, the same criteria. That's no good. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and you've got this, uh, so the Pew Research study saying that a majority of Americans uh, mm -hmm. don't approve of using race as an ambition. And, and you touched on a point too, where the color of your skin doesn't necessarily equal diversity. Some of these colleges are talking about students that have been let in that have uh, you know, waded through a lot of challenges just to even get to college, which oh, sure. makes them a very diverse person. Yes, and the opinion says that at the beginning, that the universities here had six, seven categories that they put students in and said, what, what's so magic about those categories? Not every Hispanic is the same. Not every Asian American is the same. That's not fair to systematically stereotype big groups of people. The opinion ends and says, maybe a student, one student, could write a personal essay about how race affected them and they overcame race. Good for them. That might be a reason that student gets in, but you can't categorize about whole groups of people. All right, now let's ask the million dollar question here. What happens now? What, yeah. These colleges, universities, the admissions offices, what do they do? Their job got a lot more challenging. If the goal continues to be to try to have a diverse student body, however defined, uh, they're going to have to be very careful about how they define that, where it doesn't explicitly set racial targets for what you want to have in your class. And the way you get there has got to be as race neutral as possible. What, this, what the next step is going to be in this is people doing things like the top 10% rule that we have at the University of Texas that on its face is race neutral but is designed to achieve certain goal, diversity goals in the student population. That, will, that remains to be seen where that's going to pass muster here. The majority suggests you're going to have to be very careful with those. Well, and I imagine you'll probably have some elected officials saying 
Congress needs to step in. That's true, and you'll see it on both sides of that. Some will say Congress needs to step in and codify kind of what the understanding has been for the last several years. Other people will say at the state level, we saw some of this in the last session. No, some of these gray areas that may remain after the opinion, the legislatures of the states need to say no, not in our state. And we've seen that with some things our legislature just did a few weeks ago. All right, constitutional law attorney David Cole, we appreciate your time. Thank this you morning. very much. I appreciate it. Thank